everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. For this week's hobby based card, I've got this really fun Christmas bauble shaker card. So you can see there all of the bits. I've put a lot in it. I do like my shaker cards quite full. And I've got these really colourful, you can see there, these like discs. And they're just from my own stash. I've had them for so long. Um, and uh, I kind of forgot about them so I thought I'm going to use those and they look great. So there's no fancy dies needed for this bauble shape, it's just circle dies. I've just got a fancy edged one there but it doesn't matter if you've just got normal, you know, round, plain round ones. The die, it's the that's the, the kind of the focal piece and this is the Hobby Base Merry Christmas die which is just really nice. It's got, yeah, I just love the font and um, it's got the nice two little reindeers either side there. So I've got that in the middle. I've just put this little simple strip here with some washi tape and then the top I've just used some of these kind of like sprig dies that I've got. So any kind of leaf dies. I wanted it to look like the Christmas tree. So, and then I've just got some string there as well just to kind of come from the, the bauble. But really, really easy. It's just a shaker card. But it's, um, yeah, I think it's really fun, really festive and um, so shiny. So let's crack on and make it. So I am doing a five by seven card because that's the sizes I really like. Five, and, five by seven and six by six you will most commonly see me do. So I have my card base and my mats there. This is the die. All the links will be shared um, below if you're watching on Facebook and if you're watching on YouTube it will all be on my blog. But that's the die there. And then I've got some acetate and all of these bits and pieces. So we don't need those bits for the moment. Let's just go through the mats and layers. So for your card base, like I said, a piece of five by seven blank card. If not, I've got some card stock here, which was 10 by seven. And then along the 10 inch side, you just want to score at five inches, fold in half and burnish. Now mine is a little bit kind of flimsy, but I liked the red but I'm going to be adding these mats anyway. So I've got them both the same size. One's going to be for the front and one's going to be inside. And once I've added the shaker element, that cardstock will become really rigid anyway. So you want two pieces that are five, um, sorry, four and three quarters by six and three quarters, okay? And they are going to mat perfectly. Like I said, one on the front, like so, you get a nice frame and then one inside, okay? That's those pieces. So first of all, what I think we should do is, you don't need the scoreboard anymore now for this card, I just wanted to show you the card base. Let's get straight in and do the actual shaker element itself. So for this I have my mirrored card stock and I've got some of my circle dies here. So you want something, I mean it depends on what size card you're, you're using, card base size, I mean this is 5 by 7 so I've got a circle that fits nicely, you know, within that width of that 5 inches. If you're doing 6 by 6 then you could obviously go much bigger and if you're doing, you know, a smaller A6 or A2 size card then you would have to, you know, adapt your circles accordingly. But basically you want to die cut your first, your largest circle, you want to die cut with some of your on your mirrored card. Now whenever I'm using mirrored card and I'm die cutting I always like to add just a piece of copy paper over the top and that will help um, reduce you know the the or, yeah reduce the risk of getting any kind of indents on your mirror card and also any marks or any sticky marks just anything that might be on your top plate that you're not aware of um, so I always like to just run that through it won't affect your um, layering and if anything you, you know your sandwich um, of your plates. <laughs> I'll get it out in a minute. But if anything, it will just help cut that even more. So if I just remove that now, you can see I've got a really perfect piece of mirrored cardstock there with no markings on it or anything. So that's with your largest circle. So now I'm going to grab this smaller circle. Now it, it, it kind of really does depend on, you know, how confident you are doing a shaker card. I mean if you've made lots of shaker cards and you don't you can work within a very thin kind of frame then I would go for something like this that I've done which is about three eighths of an inch wide. It is a thin one. So that's the one I'm using today 
but I would suggest that maybe if shaker cards are something you don't make a lot of or you've never made one before, I would get something so that when you sit it in the middle of this, so this is going to die cut now on top of this. Now my cut line for this particular die is actually inside the circle, because so when I put it over it looks like it would be really tiny, but actually you're measuring from the inside of this circle to the outside, so it does give me a nice frame. But I would suggest that you come in even more with your circle diameter. So let me just measure um, this all up here. So the largest one I'm using here is um, say four inches. I would then get your next circle um, frame at three and a half. That way you've got that nice half inch frame that it's going to create. So let me just run this through because I think once I've done it, for anybody again who's not done this before, it will make more sense. So I need to just line this one up because I've got all those little kind of perforated lines. But as long as I've got a nice equal kind of scalloped edge around there, then that should be fine. Just pop some washi tape there and then with my copy paper again, sit that over the top, run those through. Okay, so it's just, I'll take the whole plate off for the minute. And then just carefully lift that off and there you'll see there is my frame but I would say you know bring it in like I said so it's three and a half and then you'll have this as being a half inch um, frame as opposed to the much thinner one that I've got here but um, yeah I mean I've made many 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 shaker cards so um, and once I show you my kind of little tips and tricks then you know it does make it all quite easy to do so now you want to use your largest circle and then I'm going to grab my acetate so you just want to make sure obviously your acetate is big enough for you to cut your circle from and acetate's a funny one I'm going to lose my mat there because you know you get all different um, thicknesses this is quite a thick one I'm using I recycle a lot of the packaging that I receive my stamps and dies in but if it's a thin one it will cut through normally if it's thicker like this I'll probably run it through once and then I'll go back through again okay and then when I take it out it's it's gone through but you kind of have to it's like holding on by a thread so you just want to rip the rest out okay like so okay and then you want to trim it very 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 slightly so and when I mean that, I'm going to go in now and I'm just going to remove all of that um, scallop edge on mine. So I'm literally only taking off a little bit. If you've just got a plain circle, then I would say, you know, take like one eighth of an inch off. Or, you know, a few millimetre. You just basically want to shrink it down a little bit so that it doesn't show through when you put it behind your frame. So now when I put that acetate over that frame, you can't see it at all because I've just taken off just enough okay for it to then stick down so next you want to get some I like to use the red tape especially when I'm using acetate um, I just find it sticks really really well so what you want to do here is it just fits in mine and just start to wrap it around and don't worry if it starts to buckle and kind of lift because the sticky tape underneath will be sticking down all that will be lifting up is the red tape on top which we're going to be peeling off anyway so you just want to go around and make sure you don't go over the sides because obviously you don't want anything sticky showing so I'm just going to go around and stick that all down and I'm just going to use my bone folder there and just make sure that it's all stuck down like I said again don't worry if it starts to lift because now you just want to pull it off anyway. Okay, so now I've got my my sticky tape all stuck perfectly, and then I'm going to get my acetate, got a little mark there. There we go, got rid of it, and then just sit my frame perfectly over the top, like so. You want to make sure that it sticks to all of the you know whatever shape it is because you might want to use obviously you know shaker cards can be anything this is the bauble one but there's no reason why you can't change the shape so now there's my little shaker window 
Okay, so I've already gone ahead and die cut my Merry Christmas there on the same mirrored cardstock that I've used for this, okay? So then what I'm going to do, so I want to now stick that right in the centre of this acetate. Now I would recommend that you use double sided tape, so you die cut, you basically get your mirror card, you stick it onto a double sided sheet, like, um, you know, you can buy these A4 sheets, and then die cut it. That way, an intricate die cut like this will then have a sticky back on it, so it will basically become a sticker. But I have run out, so what I also do when I'm using intricate dies is just put some glue over my hand, especially when you're using mirrored cardstock. But I've got another little tip as well for if you get any kind of sticky smudges and smears and things like that. So I've just covered that enough, it's only light, you don't need to go too crazy, although there is a loose bit. And then I just want to get it centred. doesn't matter if it's crooked because it's a circle, so I can just turn that, but I want to make sure I've got an equal gap from side to side and just stick that down. You have to hold it a little bit longer when you're using wet glue with the acetate, but this is tacky glue anyway, so you can see already it's already stuck. But I've got a little bit that's come over there and there. Let the glue dry. Don't do anything with it. Don't rub it. Don't do nothing. Let the glue completely dry first. Then after that you can buff it all up and it will come off perfectly. Okay, so that is now my little kind of shaker window all ready to go. And then what we can do is, I would say you need to go ahead and get all of your bits and pieces here. So these are my little sprigs that I've got. I've done three for each side, so I've got them kind of going like that. Okay, that's how they're going to be. And then I've already prepared my bow, which will go in the middle. And I've got a little bit of string there, which is just the green, red, and white. So it all ties in together. Then I've got this little strip to go along the bottom. Again, this is a five by seven card, but if you do want to recreate that and do the strip, you'll need a piece that is just shy of five. So four and seven eighths of an inch um, by half an inch. And then I've just put a strip of washi tape there through the middle, okay? But you can also put some ribbon, and before you stick down your top mat here, you can wrap it around. Um, you know, you can do that as well with the ribbon. So I'm going to grab my card base, and I'm just going to get those mats and layers stuck down. Then take this piece here, and this is obviously going to sit on here, but we want to create a little kind of... To be honest, this is optional. You don't end up seeing it, but I was kind of going to have it a bit higher, so maybe when I position this one. But basically, I die cut with these, this piece that came out of the middle of the larger circle that I cut. I'm going to die cut this smaller circle, okay, like so. And then I just want to kind of cut an arch. Doesn't matter if it's not exact just like that, so you're creating like a moon. And then the idea is that will stick behind to create a little kind of, you know, top of your bauble like you would get. And then I've got my hole punch here. Pop a little hole, try and get it as centered as possible. And then that will stick like so. So it's just ways of using, you know, other things. You don't have to go out and get a bauble die or any specific bits and pieces. It kind of, you know, does work on its own. And then I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of red tape. Just, I'm literally just going to pop it on the top there. So I'll be gluing the rest of this, the back piece down. I'll just put just a little bit there. And then you want it, you do want to make sure you get this perfectly in the middle. Make sure it doesn't overhang so that you can see it through the acetate. But there you go. Okay, how cool does cool that look? Um, right, so next we need to add our foam on the back. So I've already got some foam strips here, which I've just popped onto a sheet of greaseproof paper, which is what I always do. And then I want to cut very, very thin strips. Now, depending on how thick your frame is, if you've got a thicker frame, obviously, then you can have a thicker strip. But I need to keep mine quite thin. So this is about one eighth, one eighth of an inch width that I'm cutting this strip. And I might have to do one more. This might be enough. But the idea that you stick it to the greaseproof paper is so that it doesn't damage your scissors and you can cut these thin strips. So now I'm just going to peel off a little bit of the backing 
and then basically just stick it around that frame. Again, making sure you don't go in inside the window or over the outer side. You need to keep it all within that frame. Okay, so I'm just joining that last bit up. When you get to the kind of the, the when you get to the end and you meet that other you know piece of foam, make sure you join them right up because you don't want any sequins falling out. You can also use fun foam for this. You die cut it the same way so you've got that thin frame that, as we did with these and you stick the fun foam behind to give you the dimension so there are other ways to do it. So that's now all got my foam on the inside and that is basically going to come and sit down here. You can't see anything which is good. So I'm going to bring it down. No I'm going to keep it where it is because I am going to use that strip that I've got. I'm just going to just copy the same one that I've done before so I just want to make sure I've got it roughly. Yeah that's about right. Okay so sit it in the centre and I kind of need to keep my eyes really on that area there. So I've got my little shaker bits here. And you're going to just tip as many as you want in that kind of area. I'll put a few more in, there we go. I think that's enough. And you just want to keep them all contained. Don't worry if you've got quite a mountain mound there. In fact, that is maybe a bit too many. There we go. So just keep them all in there and just keep bringing this piece over and just making sure that none of them are going to stick to the double sided foam once you take it off. See, perfect. So that's where it's going to go. Everything that's in there isn't going to stick to this when I stick it down. So now you want to take the backing off. Okay, and then very carefully just spend a bit of time, just hover it over until you're really happy. I want to make sure I've got, like I said, it's nice and straight and I've got it even on both sides. And then squeeze it down, like so. It should obviously stick straight away and then you can move it all around. Look at that. It's just so fun. Oh, I love this. Absolutely love it. Okay, I mean, that just looks fab on its own. You could just pop pop a bow there and look you've got a really cute little card so if you want to keep it even more basic you can do. So it's entirely up to you now obviously how you want to decorate this. You may just want to put some nice ribbon and and you know have it however you want but I just wanted to show you that fun little way of adding that little kind of top like hook I guess. So next we need to stick down all of our little bits, our sprigs. Okay so I'm just going to thread through this piece here. You could do this before if you want but it's obviously not stuck down yet, so you can just lift it up and thread that one through, like so. I've just put some double-sided tape on my strips. I'm just going to stick that down while it's here. I've just put my glue gun on, so I'm just waiting for that, like so. And then I can start now positioning these. So just with my hot glue, so again, because I'm using, you know, there's quite a lot of layers and then the fabric, the hot glue is just really good. I'm going to put the hot glue right in the middle so again, on my one now, you're not really going to see this piece, but I just think it was good to show you all. So I'm just going to kind of start sitting them where I think they should go. Let me grab, use this here, so I'm just push it all down onto the glue. So I have that one there, and the next one, just kind of have them all slowly like cascading down. There we go, I'll trim that string in a minute, and then on the back of my bow, another little bead of glue and that will then cover all of that up. Look at that, it's so pretty and then let's just trim, get my fabric scissors there and just trim this off like so. I'll put some glue on the ends of those ribbons as well or the string just so it doesn't fray but there you have it. A gorgeous, really fun shaker card. Okay, and like I said, you can either use tissue, I like a microfiber cloth, but now if I just go over straight away, it's taking off any glue. It just, yeah, I don't know whether it's just the slight, you know, uh, the fibers on the microfiber cloth, the tissue, just, just take it off straight away. And that way you, you know, you're kind of shining it up, but also you're not getting any kind of indents in your Miri card or anything like that, but there you go. And then I've got some Nouveau Drops here. This is the White Blizzard. I do like this one. And I'm just going to add a few 
just stick to odd numbers, always looks nice when you use. And do one up here. Okay, you can't really see them in the pictures and uh, in the uh, camera too much, but they do add a little bit of more dimension and some sparkle once they've dried. But there you have it, two really fun shaker cards. I just can't stop looking at them, they're so shiny. Using the Merry Christmas um, sentiment die there by Hobby Base, which is just, yeah, a really handy one to have. And yeah, hopefully you've picked up some good little tips there from me and you go and make a shaker card. <laughs> so I will be back again next week with another Hobby Base card, but until then guys, thanks for watching, bye.